very first, very first call today. She hit the script all the way through. Little bit of nerves that you could see, but you couldn't hear them. What what was the uh, the result of that call? Oh, I mean three calls. Like I mean four. One was uh, picked up, and um, uh, it was just to introduce myself that I didn't realize it, and uh, just saying hello and um, offering uh, the app. And anyone cares about the, the free app? Everybody loves it. Everybody suddenly likes it. Yeah, my glasses were sweating. That was so. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> so she got she got through the first call, got a contact. And had somebody that wanted to, uh, her to send the app. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Way to go. Very good. Very good. So now you've got the momentum going. I know. And yeah. you can just finish it. Okay, who else had some good successes? Yes, Conrad. Yeah, I, I talked to a client that I haven't spoken to in probably two, maybe even three years. And uh, he says he's looking for something perhaps in the next two to three weeks. Wow. Uh, how, how angry was he that, that you hadn't called him in two or three years? I didn't say anything. About right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They want to hear from you. Any, anybody else? Courtney. Yes. Um, I spoke to somebody as well that I haven't spoken to in three or four years. Um, so, of course, talked to her from you at first, but we had a really nice catch-up conversation, and she's uh, looking to buy, and she's looking to buy within the next few months. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. right. She's like, I was wondering who to talk to. I was like, well, I'm your girl. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Simon, you had a uh, Yeah, actually, I mean, I touched base with a friend who's, who I talk to, I don't know, every couple of months or so, but, so I, this probably would happen anyway, but he said, yeah, he's looking for a house. Um, in six months, so in September is the deadline. So, on those guys, uh, awesome. very good. Yeah, very good. Okay, um, so set those appointments, get those buyer agencies written up. I'm meeting with her next week. Oh my! And you got an appointment. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well done. Awesome. So, so your your first real day of, of of doing this Monday, you know, crazy all over the place. Tuesday, mission day. So, and you know, first morning of of now starting to get into the habit of this. Did, did anybody not get at least one contact? Right. Everybody's adding to the database already. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. you, you, you look like you want to tell us something. No, no, I'm just no. shocked that it was that simple. <laughs> I've never done that. No. <laughs> never. So, so, so why was it simple? Because you just did it. It was like I got three calls, three people. They're freaking-ishly excited about this app. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very good. Connor. I have a question. What should we do with answering machines? Should we leave a message? Should we yeah. save it for later? Yeah. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a, a great new app. I want to be able to get it to you. Give me a call back when you get a chance. Yeah. Just stay simple. Yeah. Simple, call to action, Gladys. I just left a message to a client because all three of them I didn't reach, but she just called me right back and said, great. Yeah. Now, I also offer home show tickets because I'm doing home show tickets now, so I'm calling for that. Yeah. So she called me right back. Yeah. yeah, again, being in contribution. I've got something to give you. I'm not just calling for business. I have something to give you. That's amazing. That's amazing. Was it hard for anybody? Hands up if it was a little yeah. uncomfortable. Of course, well, yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. <laughs> of course it is. Always. Of course it is. And you know what? It never really gets to be something that's that's like super super fun to do unless you're somehow wired a little bit strange. <laughs> but it's something it's something that you need to do, and it's something that, that once it's done, you can go, oh, that part's done. Now I can get on with some of the other things that I like doing, knowing that I've planted the seeds to have consistent business come in all the time. Because the people are going into my database, then I'm going to feed them and nurture them, and then I'm going to harvest them later. And some of the seeds that you're planting now, you may not see the fruit for six months, for a year, but if you keep in touch with them, then you've started the process. And through this whole course, you're going to build momentum. Like, these are exercises. We call them 10 fours. We make you go do your calls. This is your business. This is what's going to give you those results at the end of the year. So just... It's not us that are saying, okay, go and make the calls. It's just like, go talk to people, get in the habit of doing this, and get the momentum going. And it's, it's, you'll be amazed what you'll find at the end. John. I just have one question about uh, signing people up. Mm -hmm. yeah. like you said day one, that was not hard for me, is to sign people up. I have about 25 possible buyers. None of them are signed up. I just wait till they 
we get the offer, and then you know, they're not your buyers. <laughs> I'm well aware of that. You know, that's because of the hobby. What are, what are way their of names? Sharing. What are their names? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going today, and I'm going to yeah. show properties. I'm going to sign them up. Well, so those are ten calls you have to make. Those are ten contracts you're going to get signed. Yeah, you're right. There you go. And then just say, you know, we're working together. This is this yeah, is what I kind of use for buyer agency agreements, uh, especially if I haven't been as diligent as I wanted to. It's, um, to get signed, I usually say, we have a ton of paperwork to do when you're ready to put that offer in, and we don't have a lot of time. So I like to get some of the admin stuff done in advance. You know, we're comfortable working together, so let's just get it out of the way so that we can focus on the offer on offer night. So just go back to the mall and, and get them signed up. Yeah. The, other, the other thing you can do with buyer agency stuff, if, if you're feeling like you heard some resistance from them, after you've done a couple of sets of showings, is to say, you know what? The, the broke of record in my office is really sticky about paperwork. Under Ontario law, we have to have this contract signed. So can we just get this done so that I can get him off my back? Because we stay in order to show your homes, we have to you should really sign yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Philip now, and he's going to delve more into <laughs> databases. Tomorrow, uh, Friday morning, um, I'm actually teaching that class. So we're going to start every morning the same way. So come with your 10 names so you're not diddling around trying to look things up because it's really action time and that's you know an opportunity for you to start it and then when the course is finished, you can go back and finish what you didn't do in those 20 minutes but it gets your foot in the door and you get started on it. So make sure that you give your numbers to your team leaders. It's not their job to babysit you but they can't put them up until they have them from you. Um, so before you go to bed, when you put them in the system, just text them or call and leave a message with your team leader so that they've got, they can do their job. And all the team leaders, put your numbers in before you leave today. <coughs> and I will see you all tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey. Thanks, Lizette. Hi. Hi. Yeah. How are you? Yay. <laughs> Okay, so so uh, I'm going to do a really super quick introduction of me because I don't like talking about me. Uh, you probably know me from the, hey, how do I do this contract, somebody who's trying to screw me on a deal, what do I do, discussions is the broker of record, uh, but, but I do have another life outside of there, which is why you can't call me at 8 o'clock and say, can you review this offer I'm presenting at 8.30. Uh, so as, as one half of the Kashansky Brown team, uh, I'm the brown half. Uh, I raise the other half. Uh, we uh, we have a, a, a you know we're fortunate. We have a great business, um, and it really is database driven. So uh, our 2015 numbers. Uh, we uh, finished the year with 54 transactions. We did about 43 million dollars in uh, in volume. Had our very first millionaire <coughs> real estate year. Uh, so, so as anybody that's read the book, you, you want to get to a point where uh, you, you sort of break through that million dollar GCI mark uh, and after all these years together, we were finally able to do that. It's just the two of us. In terms of this, um, this, so, 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 let me get to the back. So, so uh, it's just the two of us. We have uh, great admin backup, but again, everybody's job sort of focuses around the, the building and feeding of the database. Uh, that's, that's where probably in, in the past year, 65% of our business was uh, referral from the database. So either people referring us people or people who've been there and, and we've been sort of nurturing, finally coming to fruition. So super huge part of the business. Um, and, and again, really, really, really super critical. Uh, in terms of, of uh, what we're gonna go over today, I really do want to focus on why that database is so important. Um, we talk about it a lot, you hear it a lot. Uh, it's usually the question where if somebody in any training session says, so tell me about your database, everybody goes, oh, not this again. Um, but I, I want to get the, the, the sort of the, the cementing of the idea that you don't have a business until you have a database. Every business in the world is built around mining the data that they collect from consumers. Getting new consumers in is super hard, super expensive. If you've got data that you're collecting, 
you get to, to target your marketing, you get to target how you do things. And I think we all go through that all the time. So uh, we're going to go through what, uh, what goes on in the database, why it's important. Um, this 10, 10, 10, 10 that you keep hearing about, if you were able to do the 200 people into your database that you committed to at the beginning of, of the session, by the end of the year, I guarantee out of that 200, there will be three to four pieces of, of business that you wouldn't have got otherwise. Is there anybody in the room that doesn't want to do four extra deals this year? Raise your hands. Yeah. Excellent. So, you know, I, I get that it's a time commitment. Uh, and again, uh, it does push us out of our, our usual boundaries and into some uncomfortable places. But really, it's, it's a super, super important part of what goes on. So let's talk a bit about um, marketing. We're going to take the database thing, we're going to put it off to the side for a second. <coughs> Targeted marketing. Has anybody uh, uh, been impacted by it? By Did something it? we received? Yeah. yeah. What, what companies market to you? Cruise lines. Why? Why, why, why do cruise lines call you Gladys? Because we've been on a cruise. Right. Right. So they're starting to get the idea that if you've done it once, you might do it again. Chimney cleaning. Chimney cleaning. Eavesdrops. <laughs> 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 I want to call the chimney cleaning companies once just to see yes. if some little guy in tattered stuff shows up with a brush. <laughs> uh, duck cleaning. Duck cleaning. Duck cleaning. Yeah. Nobody calls me, get about that. Yeah. So, so I'm going to use the duck cleaning as a really great example. Uh, has anybody had that call and said, finally, somebody has called me about cleaning my ducts? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And, and, and the reason is that, that they're not targeting. They're doing mass marketing. So what we're going to talk about in real estate is always going to come back to targeted marketing. So, so in terms of the, the who does it, the best companies in the world do super targeted marketing. They're at a point now where between sending you apps and sending you emails and all the other things that go on, as, as you now walk by their stores, they have near field communications that then change the ads that are appearing around the space to, to, to cater specifically to you, your age group, your demographic, everything else. And that's as targeted as you can get. Uh, we're, you're, we're, we're going down that road now with our app and, and, and with everything else. But the reason you do that kind of targeted marketing is, is to become top of mind. So go through a couple different, uh, different products. Uh, top of mind for potato chips. Lays. Lays. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, top of mind for pop. Coke. Coke. Yeah. Tennis <laughs> shoes. Nike. Nike. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple. You, you, can go to, you can go to any running room, there's 25 million different brands of shoes, but when we think of shoes, and when you get to a point where you can, you can talk about a product using the brand name, when was the last time anybody said, can, can I have a tissue? That's for Kleenex. What do you, what do you clean your ears with? <laughs> Not cotton swabs? <laughs> right? So you want to get to that point with your own customers that when they think house, they go to your name. I've got to call Nick. I've got real estate issues. I've got to call Svetlana. You want to be top of mind. So to do that requires targeted marketing. You can't do super targeted marketing without database. Database. Yeah. It's really about the data. So if we look at, at you know, how, how that's going to relate directly to your own business, having a targeted marketing campaign, what's that going to allow you to do? Be organized. Zero in. Organized is one? Zero in, like just really. Zero in, yeah. Um, Focus your efforts while trying to spend a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe 20, but Mm -hmm. The 80-20 principle, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really, how much, how much money do you want to waste trying to figure out what works? You know, how many people have, have run ads for, you know, for listings and never had one person show up saying, oh, I heard about your open house from the Globe and Mail app? 
It happens all the time. So, so as, a, as a business, we've stopped doing it. We track all of our stuff so that we know what works and what doesn't. And the more targeted you can be, the more the person hearing the message feels like it's catered directly to them. And, and if you can do targeted marketing with, with your real estate business, then you blow by everybody that's dropping 14,000 postcards in the mail every month in the same neighborhood that has no target to it. They're just blasting. And they're hoping through sheer numbers that something comes out of it. If you can be targeted, you can be efficient, you can be cost effective, and you can be leading with revenue. And that's really what, what a great, successful, profitable business is based on. Uh, so going through uh, you know, the, the, the real core of, of why the database is important, it's, it's all the information that you need to be doing your reaching out, to be doing your targeted marketing, to be doing your constant touch campaigns. If you don't have the details, it's really difficult calling somebody and, and having to figure out on the fly when was the last time we spoke? What did we speak about? Were you the one with two kids or three kids or no kids? It, it's, it's just, it, it makes everything super, super difficult. So if you've got something that's clearly defined, that's really well organized and, and split into the widest number of categories you can come up with, then you're always at your fingertips having the ability to pull rather than to, to push information. So I can now pull people who said they were looking in Parkdale for fixer-uppers, who want them as investments, and said in the next two years. If I've categorized everything well at the beginning of building my database, I can then pull those things when I see a building come up that I think would be perfect for an investor that can fix stuff up. Yeah. How do you categorize your database going in? So going in, it's really a matter of you setting up the categories. In, in most uh, database <coughs> programs, they have a whole series of fields that you can pick from, and you can customize to, to your, your own needs. Well, what, what, what do you typically do? Like what, how do you s segment them? Like if you talk to somebody, you're going to put them in a field and say, buy in the next six months, buy in the next 12 months, whatever. Yeah. Any other? So we do, so again, so, so we'll, we'll get into the categorizing a little later okay. in, into this, but, but we certainly, we start buyer, seller, we look at time frame, we look at budget, we look at area of the city, and then we go into the specialty category. So are they part of our farm? Are they part of a, a neighborhood? And we've got all different neighborhoods set up. Are, are they part of, and, and as you sort of add things, as you, you gain more experience, you can then just change some of those fields, or you can add to them later on. But but you know certainly right away, buyers, sellers, time frame, and budget. Okay. Uh, in, in, in the end, really, the, the 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 true value of a great database is is that it provides what? Leads. Yeah, the leads. Where are your leads coming from? If not from these calls that you're doing and emails that you're sending out and people responding. I mean, you, you can go out and, and you can try to find immediate business uh, at open houses. And I'd certainly that's part of filling your database. It's one of the, the sort of the food sources for it. But if, if you're going to work hoping that you're going to meet somebody who says, funny, I was going to start looking tomorrow, you're, you're, you're going to be looking awfully long and hard. The, the whole point of, of what we do is to, to help you build consistent businesses. So, so there are leads coming in constantly. Rather than having a sort of cyclical, things are busy now and a whole bunch of people talk to me because I met them in an open house, but now for three months there's nothing going on. So with a database that's properly managed, you will have things that come in on a very regular basis. If, if every day you add in 10 names, every week, some of those 10 names will start to kind of go somewhere with a lead. And as, as the year goes on and as the second year goes on, you'll start to see that two or three a month are calling saying, now I'm ready. 
When you first put them in the database, they said a year from now. Well, that might be seven months from now in reality. And you may find that at that seven month mark when they call and say, okay, let's start doing this, you kind of forgot when they went in the database. But it's now a lead and it's come up and it's turned into work. <laughs> Melanie. So one, one of the many challenges that uh, I have as far as the database is the uh, not met contact. So I've <coughs> contacted you, maybe I've cold called you or what have you. Where I worry is that all of a sudden this database gets out of control, like you hear so many agents and they might have a database but there's like thousands of people and they haven't categorized them. So if I make a cold call and you say yes, no, and I think about the 10, 10, 4 and I go, well, that's one of my contacts today, should that person be in the database? Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody should go into your database. I'm a big believer, you, you take you know everybody that, that you have some kind of contact with and if they don't say, please don't call me again, you're in. You're in and, and somewhere down the line, you will turn into, into one of three things for me. So you will be somebody that does business with me or you'll be somebody that refers business to me. And we have people who've never done a deal with us that have sent us business. And when we ask them, you know, th this is fantastic, what, what made you think to do this? They said, because you guys are consistent. And I want my friend to work with somebody that's on top of the market all the time. They, they can't vouch for our service, but in their head, we've created the idea that we are top of mind, we are sending them, you know, really good information, and that's the kind of service they want for their own friends. But I also know you guys um, have a system as to sort of manual database like farming have a couple contacts versus goes into a database that you're going to work like I know Irene when we were doing door knocking with her she'll say like these ones I keep on a list I don't necessarily put them into the database looking to talk producer to so that's where I'm sort of doing that well when do you when you know yeah so so again it really comes down to to them saying um, I'd like more information I'd like you to stay in touch there are people that are very nice at the door who don't say one thing one way or the other. They don't say go away, but they don't say come back. So we know we're going to get back to them in the door knocking in the farm anyway. So those people will then go into a, here's the information about you. And we, we keep all of that from our door knocking records so that when we pull up an address, we can see we've door knocked that three times. Three times they've been kind of bad. But they haven't said no, so we'll keep doing it. And then the minute they say, actually, yeah, if you could send us the, the sale from down the street, now they're in the database. Does top producer work well in mobile? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Uh, we, we, we're, so, we're so disciplined in doing everything in the office during a specific time that we've never tried to add stuff in mobile. Yeah. 